The original one was Thorazine, that's still in use. Um, I'll tell you how they were developed. They were not developed by finding something that would make people happier, give them more free will, enable them to love. A surgeon in Paris in the very early 1950s was looking for a drug and he wanted, he got sent from the drug company, this is the beginning of the big drug companies, a drug that he thought would um, sort of obtuned his surgical patient. The Labory was also had all kinds of interest in psychology, he immediately got in touch in the same facility with two Paris psychiatrists, Delay and Deneker. And within a year, they, were, they had created a giant conference on this drug because DeLay and Deneker and a bunch of other people began massively experimenting with it on patients. Almost all these patients were women. Even if they had men on the wards, they always preferred to do big things to the women, harmful things. That's true about lobotomy. It was true about shock treatment. I spent a few years stopping the return of lobotomy and psychosurgery in the early 70s and it was such a disproportionate number of women that I got, I got a considerable amount of help from, from women's groups. It was so disproportionate. Now these women were developing all kinds of weird symptoms. They would grimace, they would stick out their tongues, they would jiggle around. Nobody paid any attention. They were women, crazy women. Probably caused by their ovaries or something. They literally, they paid almost no attention. And they said, uh, one of them, Delay or Denica, wrote, we knew right away we had really had a great drug because the first day we gave it on the wards, the nurses uniformly said their work was easier. See, from the beginning, it wasn't about the patients. 